Hello everyone and welcome back to Neptune's Child Tarot. My name is Monique and this is my second tarot channel here on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for your continued love and support here on the channel. So today's pick card reading, we are doing something a little bit different. It's actually, um, I was just kind of scrolling through uh, YouTube to find readings that would work well with one of the decks that I have <clears throat> that we're using today because it is quite a unique deck. So I was just kind of scrolling through what types of ideas um, could I use that deck for <laughs> because it is like I feel like it, the, the, the subject could be a little bit um, specific. So I was just kind of scrolling through and I found a reader. Um, who is it? I think it was called Venusian something, Venusian Tarot, something like that. And I saw one of the videos that had a title that said, How Are You Seen in the Spirit Realm? Okay, so that is what we're doing today. I was inspired by that, that subject matter. Um, I didn't even look at what the reading, what the, con like, I didn't watch it. <laughs> I, d I didn't watch it, but I saw the title of it and I was like, that's it. That's going to work. That's perfect. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. <clears throat> so how are you seen in the spirit realm? Okay. So the spirit realm could be consistent of past on loved ones, spirit guides, ancestors, guardian angels, past on pets, um, light beings. Uh, you know, those of you that are star seed, you might feel connection to your galactic origins, family, um, this could be 4D, 5D, beyond, ascended masters, specific um, deities that you might work with. Okay, so I'm just kind of leaving it kind of open to just the spirit realm. Whatever you feel the spirit realm is to you. Okay, you might look at those as souls or beings that are guiding you, leading you um, on your path. Okay, so we're kind of getting, I, I feel like with this subject, with this question, how are you seen? You know, so <laughs> when I was just kind of sitting here by myself, shuffling through the, the to put the piles together with the Oracle cards, um, I was just kind of sitting here laughing, chuckling to myself, like I wonder what my, my, you know, how I would be seeing in the spirit realm for myself too, you know, and I was like, is it? you know, what kind of messages would come through. But I'm interested to see what kind of messages come through today because I feel like it is a pretty good idea. Um, it is something that I've never done before, so I'm excited to see how this works. Um, <clears throat> so, yes, how are you seen in the spirit realm? Is it good? <laughs> is it bad? Do you, do, do spirits see you struggling or, you know, do are they seeing you? as like on point and on your path and following your north node and yeah so I just kind of see what what is coming through today so if you do feel drawn to more than one of the piles that is perfectly okay for today's reading um, go with whatever your intuition is uh, leading you towards okay but we do have three choices for you today we have card number 42 it says Ashura of the Northeast um, so it looks like a man, a zebra man, um, and that is going to be with this uh, strawberry obsidian. Okay, that's going to be for pile number one. It's going to focus. Strawberry obsidian for pile one. Okay. Pile two is the medicine wheel, and it says continuation, and that is going to be with this carnelian. Okay, so carnelian for pile two. And then pile number three is card number 13, taboo. And that is with this yellow crystal here. It's going to focus very well. There we go. Kind of, sort of. Okay, yellow crystal for pile number three. I don't remember the name of this one. But those are the choices. Um, <clears throat> for those of you that are wanting to book a private reading, you can find my email down below in the description box. Just send me an email 
and I will provide you with more information on booking ratings and services with me. Um, anything else? I think that was it. Okay. So pile one with the strawberry obsidian, pile two with the medicine wheel and the carnelian, pile three with taboo and the yellow crystal. Pause the video if you need more time to just kind of sit and meditate on things before making your choice and I will see you at your reading. Hi pile one. So those of you that resonate with this card 42, Ashura of the Northeast. Um, and the strawberry obsidian. This is going to be a reading today. So we are finding out how are you seen in the spirit realm? Okay, so how does spirit or spiritual beings, however, like I said, you wish to uh, look at that. Okay, that is what we are um, getting into today. For those of you that are wanting to know what tarot, what oracle decks I'm going to be using for today's reading, um, I as, am using quite a bit. Um, how many is this? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different oracles and then a tarot deck. I always list them in the description box. Okay. So this is your first card here. Let's make sure this all fits. Okay. We have fire. Wow. Number 19. We have Valkyrie with Victory, Victory, Victory. We have Stone People with Knowing, okay. We have Shapeshifter with Fluidity, that is a really beautiful card. Okay, we have the beaver and birch with home. There was another reading I did today where there was a birch, a birch tree in it as well. Let's make sure this fits in here. Okay, we have dear spirit number 18. This is number 30. Um, Dear Spirit, and it says, bring a gentle touch. Bring a gentle touch. We have the Blue Bear, Blue Bell Fairy with gratitude. Card number six. There's another of the Deer family. The stag is here also. And then we have the New Moon with promise. Okay, and then here we have a couple that is embracing each other, watching the sunset. And the moon is out here. Okay. All right, so how are you seen in the spirit realm? The first thing that is pretty profound here is this card up here, Ashura of the Northeast. This card talks about you being someone who has a very strong connection to the spirit realm and strong connection to your higher self. Okay, and specifically talking also about friendships, which because your your connection to your higher self and divine is so strong, in this case, this card is talking about first and foremost, you being your own best friend, okay? And then having that beautiful gift, I feel like because there is such a strong connection to the divine, that the spirit realm sees you as a person who is very much on the path, if not already, stepped into their divinity or at least have this awareness of it, okay? And I feel like they see you as someone who has a very strong, powerful, energy here on earth 
that is incredibly driven, motivated, passionate, uh, very knowledgeable. Okay. There is something here about relationships, connections, friendships. I feel like that are very significant. I'm also getting this energy here where the spirit realm is seeing that you have been someone who has faced a lot of darkness, a lot of your own darkness, because the zebra, <clears throat> you know, having its stripes there is also symbolic for you as a person here on earth who is unique and a very standout, okay? You are stand out to the spirit realm, <laughs> okay? Um, very stand out, very unique. There are very special, I feel like, gifts that you have that the spirit realm kind of acknowledges. I'm feeling that there is this very ethereal energy about you, um, that they see you as someone who, you know, whether you have goals, dreams, desires, that you are someone who is able to adapt, someone who has been able to, someone who first and foremost is resilient and who has the ability to, I feel like try to remain optimistic, even though, like I said, I, I feel like there has been some darkness that you have faced. Um, for many of you, I'm kind of seeing in, in, in a way, like kind of walking the path of your ancestors and I, I'm definitely feeling that your the spirit realm has seen you as someone who is doing a lot of clearing of some very heavy karma, specifically surrounding friendships, family members, romantic partnerships, um, and someone who has been able to transmute that energy into something uh, quite powerful. Okay, I'm also seeing contract spirits showing me a contract. So clearing and I actually I just did a reading about this. I think it was yesterday. I posted it um, a few days ago. So it's not the reading that I I'm actually doing two read two pick a cards today. But you guys are going to see this on I think it's Thursday. If you're watching the day that I upload it. But I think I did a, a soul contract reading It was the second video from a few days ago on what is your soul contract with this person? But soul contracts is something that is coming up here from what I'm channeling right now. Spirit is showing me like this in the way that spirit is showing it to me. <laughs> it's a very beautiful, um, you know, like the scrolly piece of paper with the, with the, with the writing on it. Um, so a, a contract, a sacred contract in which this has been something, uh, Hmm. I, yeah, I'm definitely feeling like a lot of a lot of clearing. I'm seeing a waterfall. Okay, the spirit is showing me a waterfall with a lot of this clearing, a lot of release, a lot of this energy of releasing, clearing, um, regeneration, restoring, purifying in a way. Your energy fire is also something very powerful for purification. Um, I'm kind of seeing that your the spirit realm kind of sees you as this bright light, the a way shower. I feel like for others, um, with victory being here, it does remind me a lot of the six of wands. And it's funny because before I started even started putting these piles together, and I was just kind of, you know, trying to find which tarot deck am I going to use for this reading today, um, and I tried a few different ones um, to see which would you know go nicely with the aesthetic here. And the two that I tried the first time, I thought maybe these will work and they didn't. <laughs> but the cards that were kept coming out, even though I wasn't really asking spirit a specific question, the six of wands kept coming out over and over again. Okay. Um, and this does remind me of the six of wands, which is about a victory. It's about success, recognition. So I'm definitely feeling that the spirit realm recognizes you for you know, what you have grown into, what you've evolved into. Um, uh, Spirit is showing me something about voices, words, communication, something about the way in which you communicate 
Um, it may even be a natural inclination toward teaching or guiding others, mentoring, speaking, um, storytelling in a way, sharing your story with others is something that is very inspiring. And so the spirit realm sees you as someone who has the ability to kind of draw people towards you. So you might attract a lot of people, a lot of energy, sometimes unwanted, you know, so that might be a need for kind of setting boundaries here. But I feel like the spirit realm sees you as someone who has been able to kind of overcome a lot of challenges um, along your path as you were walking the path of your uh, destiny here. And I feel like there's also a lot of, of gentleness, a lot of nurturing energy that you naturally have that the divine also sees within you. Um, yeah, especially with this shapeshifter energy here and the fluidity. I love this card. Hmm. Even in this here, there's a little, a little, um, that little horn there, the antler that's coming out of here. I feel like the spirit realm also sees you as someone who is very intuitive and very tapped into nature, animals, um, the plant kingdom. There's definitely old soul type of energy here. Also a lot of very strong feminine energy that's coming through as well. But your ability to, to, I'm, I'm kind of getting this energy of like a fighting, a fighting spirit, someone who is able to face adversity, to face challenges. Um, some of you may also have a very strong connection to the Fae. Okay, elemental beings. Maybe something that's also significant. But yes, even with the birch tree here, this is a very regenerative um, tree. I actually feel like when, from what I've read about it before, it is the first tree. You know, wherever it is that it's growing around in its environment, it's the first tree to go uh, dormant early. Um you know, even if it's something that's a plant or a tree that's not doing well, but it's also the first one that is so strong in coming back and regenerating here. And the beaver is talking about home. Um, and so I feel like this might also be that there is a lot of you building in terms of, like I said, I feel like this has a lot to do with, with friendships, with relationships, um, I feel like they see you as someone who is able to receive downloads of information and can be a clear and open channel to receive that information, even if it's something that you might not necessarily have a conscious awareness of. I feel like you could be someone who is channeling information directly from source without even realizing it. And I feel like it comes from a natural tendency in the way that they see you, a natural tendency to nurture and care for others. Okay. So some of you might even, um, attract a lot of wounded souls, people that need your light. Okay. I feel like that the, the spirit realm sees you as someone who is very knowledgeable. Um, some of you have a very strong ancestral line of seers, of healers, of shamans, um, psychics, intuitives. I feel like the spirit realm also sees you as someone who has also incarnated many times, who has so much wisdom and so much knowledge um, within you. Definitely getting, like I said, a very optimistic type of energy. A person who would rather see the glass half full than half empty. Um, some of you could be fire signs here with that energy. Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, or the, an element of fire could be something that's very strong within your chart. Some of you, I feel like the spirit realm sees you as just like this very powerful, passionate, creative. There's a lot of, um, 
sacral chakra energy. Like I said, a lot of feminine, okay, a lot of power of, of, of birthing, of creation, of fertility in your abilities to be able to create and manifest that which uh, you desire. Um, gratitude is something that is very important for us, especially as our ancestors or spirit guides or the spiritual spirit realm is kind of bringing in blessings into our life. Gratitude is something that we, that our ancestors love when we are, you know, in a place of gratitude, because this really opens us up energetically to receive more blessings. But I feel like, you know, there's a lot of, if you look at this here, this light is kind of showering down on this. Uh, little fairy here so it kind of makes me feel that you know some of you may you know practice regularly meditation or prayer or something like that and talk to spirit I feel like and the spirit realm kind of acknowledges and hears those uh, prayers or intentions or you know maybe for those of you that spend time thanking your spirit guides thanking your ancestors um, for what they bring into your life or for guiding and for assisting you. Um, I'm, I'm feeling like crying right now and I don't know why <laughs> it, I, it kind of makes me feel that your ancestors are very proud of you. Um, I feel like they're, they're, I feel like your ancestors see you as someone who has been able to wear in a sense your, kind of like your badge of honor. Like I said, for many of you that chose this pile, I feel like there's a lot that you've gone through, a lot that you've been able to overcome. And it's almost kind of like these happy tears of being able to see you transform, change, and be able to wear your stripes in a sense, um, kind of like battle scars, if you will. And be able to be so powerful in transmuting that energy and regaining your life force, your energy, your vitality, you know, to manifest, I feel like, better um, within your life. I feel like the spirit realm also sees you as someone who is a very hard worker, someone who is very disciplined, someone who, especially with that element of fire there, um very motivated, you know, wanting to get things done, wanting to take care of things, wanting to stay on top of things, wanting to, uh, I feel like, do the best you can. And I feel like in a way your spirit kind of um, bless you in your life even more with knowing that there are good intentions that are behind your willingness to help others, to guide others, um, to be a good friend, okay, is, is something very significant here. So some of you could have, you know, even struggled with with um, balancing relationships or even, you know, have worked really hard to nurture others, give to others, you know, and you may not have always received that, I feel like, in return, okay? I definitely feel like the spirit realm sees you in a, in a very positive light, okay, which is something truly beautiful, your ability to adapt, to change, to grow, to evolve, which is not an easy feat, you know, sometimes when life, you know, brings us, brings us some stuff that is particularly challenging, it can be hard for us to get ourselves out of that dark place, that dark hole, um, I feel like the spirit realm also sees you as someone who is very powerful in terms of your spiritual gifts, your spiritual abilities. Okay. Something that you may have had from many past lives. Like I said, I'm definitely feeling an energy here of um, past lives even, or um, yeah, past incarnations that you've had, ancestral line even of, of shamans, healers, intuitives, okay, someone who's been able to come back. Some of you, with regard to this soul contract here, and this won't be for all of you, but some of you, with regard to this soul contract here, there may have been a past life where you were condemned, in a sense, for your gifts, 
and you may have made on how do I say that kind of like unknowingly have made soul contracts about not using your gifts okay because you may have con been condemned or um what is it called persecuted in a way for the gifts that you've had in your past lifetimes and sometimes we can make soul contracts <clears throat> in past lifetimes in which we make a vow to never use that healing gift again or to never use that spiritual gift again or never use that gift of healing because it is something that was frowned upon by society say in past lives that you've had so and in this incarnation you may be somebody who kind of struggles with being able to uncover those spiritual gifts but I feel like for the majority of you that have chosen this pile, you are very, very connected and very well known, I feel like, as a soul, um, celebrated, admired um, within the spirit realm. And that is just so beautiful. Okay. And those of you that kind of feel like you know, you kind of have this feeling of, of these gifts that you have and really trying to work towards uncovering them. You know, it you can break those soul contracts of not using those gifts from past lifetimes by bring, being able to break free of limitations, okay? And really focusing on uh, meditation stillness because, like I said, many of you have a very strong connection to your higher self, the divine, okay? And... The stronger that you work on creating that bond and that connection with your higher self, I feel like there may be a lot of awakenings, revelations, remembering who you are and even what your purpose is in this lifetime. Okay, so I'm going to be using this tarot deck here, but I know that it does have some imagery on it that might not be okay for YouTube, so I'm going to have to cover it some of them i forgot how many cards are in here that are like that but let's see what else pile number one how are you seen in the spirit realm how are you seen in the spirit realm we have the queen of trees which is the queen of wands How are you seen? Again, this very grounded, earthy, um, very connected uh, energy here to nature. We have the lovers. We have the Maid of Waters, which is the Page of Cups. How are you seen in the spirit realm? Oops, okay, so we've got Flight here. This is the Chariot. sure that she stays covered <laughs> she stays covered okay so we've got flight here or the chariot how are you seen in the spirit realm We have the elf stroke, which is the tower. Wow. Mm. And then at the bottom of the deck, I'm going to have to cover this one up a little bit too. Um, it says Nick Nicknivin. It's her name, Nicknivin, 
which is the high priestess. Okay, so if that's not saying something <laughs> about how the spirit realm see you as the high priestess, um, I don't know what. <laughs> let's see, let's cover her up a little bit. Let's put her up here. Mm. Yeah, that is very powerful energy there. Yeah, so the High Priestess, how about that? Pile one. <laughs> the High Priestess, that is the connection to the divine. That is the connection to our higher self, the connection to the Akashic records, um, to information from past lives, your, your claircognizance, um, psychic visions, psychic dreams, um... Yeah, <laughs> this is this is very powerful energy. And even with this this elf stroke here, um, which is the tower card. She looks like there is like this lightning bolt that's coming like right out of her. It's like this force to be reckoned with, you know, the tower energy is something that is very can be very chaotic, destructive. Um but this can also talk about an awakening and I definitely feel that you are an awakened soul or you've gone through an awakening, you're going through an awakening. Um, I feel like you are someone who has the ability to your, the spirit realm sees you as someone who has the ability to really kind of stir things up in terms of shaking people around you. Um, it's like very much like Kali energy, like Kali, the goddess Kali Ma. Um, not in a way like wherever you are, disaster strikes, but it's kind of like you are someone who you bring about change. You know, you, I feel like you're, you're, the spirit realm sees you as someone who helps people, in a sense, to face their inner demons, their shadow. You uh, shed light, you illuminate, okay, the darkness. I feel like you're, they're, they're, many of you may have also faced your own darkness, like a, like a very dark place, you know. And, and I don't necessarily feel like the spirit realm sees you as someone who is dark, per se, but you have to remember we are beings of both shadow and light energies, okay? And we have to be comfortable with both our dark side, dark energy, as well as our light in order to bring about harmony and balance, right? Because that is also what the high priestess is about, you know, duality. And so... I feel like even with the, the flight energy here, the chariot, the chariot is about willpower. It's about determination, focus. It's about bringing together two opposing forces to be able to move forward. Okay. Here, there's a bunch of crows that are kind of flying around here. She looks like she's got one that she's very connected to and that almost like she's receiving the messages like this bird is delivering messages to her she's seeing kind of like in this storm here where she's receiving all of that energy i i feel like the the spirit realm sees you as someone who's a very powerful and it may even be that you are more powerful than you actually realize i feel some of you are still learning how to um cultivate these gifts that you have because we also have the page of cups energy here you know, the Page of Cups can also talk about being a novice or a student or learning, exploring. Um, so some of you kind of might be early on your path where you are regaining all of those gifts and learning how to use. Here she looks like she's kind of playing in the water, you know, and maybe some of you may have had this gift, you know, or a gift of seeing or a gift of even... Um, scrying okay she could be scrying here in the water um some of you may have had these gifts since you were a child 
okay, and just really coming into um, knowing them all. The Mother Maiden and Crone is also coming up here too as well. Um, but yes, again, this, this fire energy here where I feel like you are someone who is very passionate, very creative, very powerful, powerful manifester. Okay, definitely led by the divine. Um, some of you that have done a lot of healing work too. I feel like some of you are, are working right now. The divine has seen you, I feel like, in a message that um, you're healing your inner child. Okay, which is only going to help your own gifts to be that much stronger. I feel like you're releasing a lot of illusions, um, purging, clearing a lot of energy surrounding the inner child, healing that as well, which is going to be something that even strengthens this balance here with the lover's energy, which is about um, balance. Also another energy of duality here, masculine and feminine. So it could be balancing your feminine and masculine energies. Um, some of you might even be a divine counterpart, okay? You could be either masculine or feminine, but I feel like many of you, the divine sees you as someone who is on potentially the twin flame journey, okay? Having a divine counterpart that has incarnated in this lifetime with you, because with the new moon here in promise here, you know, like I said, there's a little, there's a couple that's sitting there, um... So yeah, some of you might quite literally have a divine counterpart that you are with and you're healing and you're on your journey. Um, I feel like you've overcome a lot. There's been a lot of growing um, here. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's beautiful. I love that. Okay. So what do we want to do now? I think I want to add in some additional advice, guidance. What am I going to use? Mm. I didn't even think about that. Okay, so we're going to use this one here, the Soul Mirror Oracle, and we'll see what other last message Spirit has for you. Anything else from the Spirit Realm? Anything else from the Spirit Realm for pile number one? Anything else? I'm going to take that one right here. Okay, so I'm going to cover her a little bit. We've got attention here. It says resistant and also surrendered. She's got a little hole in her chest with a bunch of fish um, coming it out down here. So I'm going to cover her up a little bit. And then we'll see here what this card is talking about. Okay, so attention, and it says resistant or surrendered. Let's see. Okay, it says let yourself be guided by the signals your heart sends out to the world. Trust the universe to reflect what you need to pay attention to. Let go of any resistance and surrender to the flow and the world's signals. This is a respectful and honoring gesture towards yourself and your life. It says something within needs your attention. Your heart will eternally send out signals that the outer world will mirror back to you. So take these clues and walk with them, giving them the attention they need and deserve. Surrender to the flow of where your Attention is drawn and follow the golden path to your light and true direction. Resistance only makes these clues louder. Resistance creates a fragment within you like a broken mirror. The universe will keep reflecting it to you until you recognize and acknowledge it. It is a self-respecting and life-honoring act to surrender to the flow of the world's signals. Feel your attention drawn to the things that truly matter. Lighting the way to your authentic path, free from the shackles and restraints of fear. May your journey be lit with your light, leading you to greater wisdom and understanding. And it says, whatever you resist persists. And that is by Carl Jung. Um, the reflection says, where or what can I surrender to let life flow freely again? 
How does surrendering to the flow of the world signals bring me closer to my authentic path? So being that this is saying that your attention is being drawn somewhere, I don't want to just kind of leave you guys hanging because it says something within needs your attention. Some of you might know what it is, okay, but the others of you might not. So I want to ask Spirit here, what is it that needs your attention? Some of you, it could be the inner child. Okay, because we also have the tower here. The tower is something that helps to break down certain illusions. So maybe if this is the way the spirit realm sees you, maybe this is, for some of you might not see yourself this way. You might not see this yourself this great and powerful with these gifts. And maybe there is that need for you to kind of go within to discover that about yourself. Because I think I did see also, yeah, the hermit. The hermit is at the bottom. And that is about sometimes feeling a little bit lost, you know, needing guidance, needing direction, take time for, for healing here. So some of you, yes, it could be tied to um, the inner child or even if you are on the twin flame journey, the never ending healing journey <laughs> is what it should be called. The never ending healing journey. Let's see. What is your attention need to be uh, brought into pile number one? What does your attention need to be brought to? What does pile one's attention need to be brought to at this time? We have the emperor, okay, the tree of life. So the emperor energy, which is the masculine, masculine energy. What's going on with your masculine energy? Let's see what else. What does your attention need to be brought to? The Eight of Waters, which is the Eight of Cups. Okay, let's get one more. What does your attention need to be brought to? The Fool, which is about a new beginning, taking a leap of faith. So the Fool energy being about a new beginning, okay, being about a new beginning, taking a leap of faith, opening out yourself up. We do have the Eight of Cups energy here, which is about letting go or walking away from something that no longer brings us fulfillment. The Eight of Cups also leads into the energy of the Hermit. So here we are setting out on a journey of self-discovery, letting go of vices, letting go of addictions, letting go of anything that is not really aligned with us, okay? The emperor can also be a need for discipline, a need for structure, um, foundation, stability. Um, let's see what else. What does your attention need to be brought into Maybe this means stabilizing your energy or working on healing your masculine energy. Um, the masculine energy also is about being decisive, um, taking decisive action, planning, strategy, being the master of your domain, taking control. Okay. We also have the three of cups. Again, this message about friendships here and the six of cups. Yeah, so I feel like uh, your this your spirit or spirits, we'll just say spirits, are really wanting you to connect with others, okay? Other like-minded souls. Um, the six of cups can also talk about past Okay, so those of you that still have some stuff that you're needing to heal from the past, especially with all those little fish that are coming out of her heart chakra, some of you might be needing to heal some old wounds and really focus on doing that. Okay, not just one day and then three months pass and then you're like, oh, yeah, I should probably heal some more. No, this is with the emperor energy here. This is being disciplined. This is making your healing, you know, being serious about it, committing yourself to it. Okay, is, is going to be something there moving on and healing from past relationships, friendships, 
um, anything that you still might be holding on to that is that is needing to be transmuted. The other thing that I'm seeing from for you is those of you that might be stuck in the past with certain things, that Eight of Cups is where you're letting go, okay, of so those things to kind of restore, in a sense, the Three of Cups energy, which is about happiness, celebration, um, socializing, connecting with others. Some of you, friendships, kindred spirits is something that Spirit is kind of urging you to do to connect with other people, okay? Friends, making new friends, um... Okay, friendships is something that's very important, it's very significant. Maybe some of you that are on the journey or, you know, going through all of this, you feel like you're alone. This is where your the spirit realm is saying, Paddle One needs more friends, <laughs> more like-minded friends, right? Because, you know, sometimes in life when you're going through all of this, especially going through an awakening or on the Twin Flame journey... Not a lot of people know about that kind of stuff and they don't vibe with it. So it might leave you kind of feeling isolated and feeling alone and you're not, you know, there's people out there, you know, that, that are like-minded and can share in their experiences and stories and have friendships and connections that you can build so that you feel more supported Okay, and people that love and support you. So I feel like that's something definitely important here. Okay, all right. So that is all that I have for you, pile number one. I do hope this is helpful for you guys, and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, pile two. So those of you that resonated with this card here, the medicine wheel and continuation uh, and the carnelian, this is going to be a reading today. So we're finding out how are you seen in the spirit realm okay so as i said in the intro the spirit realm can consist of many different beings ancestors spirit guides angels um whatever you resonate with so let's see we're gonna put out all of these oracle cards um i always list them in the description box for those of you that are wanting to know which ones um i'm using today okay um, there's about nine here. I am going to use one or different Oracle card at the end of your reading. And then I have one tarot deck we're going to be using. So you can find them in the description box. So the medicine wheel. We have forgiveness. Okay. The medicine wheel, forgiveness. We have lightning. We have Mott. Number 30 with Mott. We have the rainbow. Oh, you got forgiveness twice. Forgiveness is here twice. Okay. The cat and lavender with independence. Buffalo spirit. It says the abundant universe will provide. Mott, I think, is also about, about justice. I have to look in the book, but if I remember right, I think Mott has something to do with um, justice, equality. I might be mistaken, but we'll see. We have Moonlight Enchantment with Magic, number 25. We got a 10 there, one here, 30, two 30s. You got two number 30s as well. Okay. And we have the Lotus Flower with Unfoldment. All right, so with the lotus, there is definitely a lot of, of growth here, a lot of transformation. And those of you that are not familiar, lotuses grow in very muddy, murky water. And out of that darkness, they emerge these beautiful, beautiful flowers Okay, so I'm definitely feeling, especially with you having forgiveness here twice. This kind of makes me feel that there could be somebody, I mean, it could be somebody, someone specifically, 
or it could be mm, potentially a number of people that may have wronged you in some way and maybe you are someone who the spirit realm sees as holding on to resentment or anger i'm going to look at mott really quick i'm going to see just peek in here and see what it says about mott but mm. okay there she is okay so it says a divine reordering is unfolding in your life edging your soul towards fruition of higher purpose the process may seem subtle at first perhaps not even consciously sensed as it seeds in the dark unknowable generative reassess recesses i'm sorry generative recesses of the soul yet there will be a moment when you feel the inner stirring the push to give expression to something that has hitherto, hither, hitherto, been, what are these words? <laughs> I have never even seen words like this before. In, hitherto been in coat? I don't even know what that means. It will take courage to commit to the manifestation, seeing through the unsteady, Beginnings as this newness grows into fullness. There is something beautiful and true meant for you. Do not be afraid to do the inner work necessary to embody and share it. You know what? I'm just going to share with you guys. There was a person and I blocked this person. Um, I blocked this person, I think like two weeks ago. This person, you know, of course, you guys know me. I have a lot of decks, okay? You have no idea. The last time I stopped counting was probably about two years ago, um, counting the decks that I have. At that time, I had over 600 tarot and oracle decks, and I'm sure I've got <laughs> way more than that since then. Um, but somebody left this nasty comment saying that, whew, I can't even, I, can't, I kind of, I don't even remember what exactly what the person said, but something along the lines of, how they were comparing a terror reader to a car mechanic. And they said something like, how can we trust anything that you say when you don't even know how to use your tools? And they said, how can we trust you if you don't even know how to use your tools? And I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm like thinking for a minute. There, you know, with as many decks that I have, I don't sit around and read every single guidebook. I read intuitively, you know, I don't always need to look at the books. I just read from the energy that I'm seeing in the pictures, you know, um, things of that nature. So, yeah, this person said um, something like, yeah, they were comparing tarot reader to a, a car mechanic. Like, would we take our car to a mechanic if they don't know how to use their tools or something like that? Now, I would say for the good majority of tarot readers that are out there, they're not using guidebooks, okay? <laughs> First off, they're not using guidebooks to kind of look up meanings of every single card while they give you your reading. They're reading intuitively. They're channeling information, Um you know, downloads that we receive. I read energy, not just cards. I read the energy. I feel things, um, anger, pain, sadness, grief, all kinds of stuff when I'm doing people's readings. So yeah, I block that person. How dare you <laughs> compare me to a mechanic? Um, but yes, those two, re those two words right there, hitherto and in, in coat, so the, it says, yet there will be a moment when you feel the inner stirring, the push to give expression to something that has hitherto been in coat. I'm going to look at that really quick. Okay, so basically it means with whatever in coat, if I'm even pronouncing that correctly, something that's only partially in existence and hitherto is something that like up until now, up until now has only been, say, limited in its existence. So Yet there will be a moment when you feel the when you feel the inner stirring, the push to give expression to something that has hitherto been in coat. So 
it's kind of like spirit saying here, not before this time will you fully, I feel like, open up into um, what, you know, being feeling guided towards your path is kind of what this is um, talking about. And yes, Mott is about justice. I was right. Truth, justice, balance, and there you go. Okay. So back to, <laughs> back to our, our topic here. What goes, and oh, no, I'm sorry, that was earlier as pick a card. <laughs> um, how have you seen, or how are you seen in the spirit realm? So with Mott being here, I feel like that is pretty significant. Okay, because this is about truth. It is about justice. And I feel like I said, you have forgiveness here twice. Um, it makes me feel because of this lotus that's here, the unfoldment, that you are someone who has gone through something very painful. And with Mott being here, you may be someone who the, the spirit realm sees that you could potentially be holding on to anger, resentment, bitterness, um, pain, even sadness. It makes me feel with the lightning here that there's all this energy kind of symbolically building up inside of you. Okay, <laughs> almost kind of like this powerful energy um like a storm that's kind of happening inwards and as this storm is kind of happening within you i feel like it's really it's bringing about a lot of growth here for you even though it could be something that's painful some of you might be in a place here where you are um wanting justice okay maybe for something that someone has done here um I have a feeling that whatever this has been, you know, it could be pretty bad, okay, that someone has done, someone's wronged you. Um, I mean, that could be a friend, it could be a family member, it could be a romantic partner, um, someone, yeah, who, who may have done you wrong. And I feel that this kind of reminds me of like the stirrings of this, of this storm, kind of happening within you, you know, uh, let's just say like anger building up, rage building up, this chaotic energy. Again, kind of like pile number one, there, this message kind of reminds me a lot of like Kalima energy, death, rebirth, transformation, okay? Almost something that has kind of, this, you know, the spirit realm sees you as something, something that has been broken open for healing, for transformation, for growth here. And I feel for many of you with the abundant universe will provide that you are someone who the spirit realm sees as, you know, getting, giving you the justice that you deserve for something that you may have gone through, bringing in and showering blessings for you. Okay. Uh, karmic retribution. I'm seeing here as well. Um, but I also feel like the spirit realm sees you as someone who is quite magical, okay, in a way that you are someone who is a very powerful manifester. You're very intuitive. Um, I'm feeling like you are you have been someone that has transmuted or is working towards transmuting a lot of this energy. Forgiveness is definitely something that's helping you to release, especially with this lightning. It reminds me a lot of the tower energy. Um, very powerful energy, I feel like, that you have within you. I'm, I'm definitely feeling that there may have been a lot of blockages that you may have had within your chakras. And I'm looking at how this powerful energy looks like it's kind of stirring from the solar plexus, even into the heart chakra. There's all of this electricity that's kind of moving outwards here. And so I feel like there has been something quite profound that you have gone through that has kind of served as a catalyst of all of this this all of this energy here that's moving inside of you, um, which again brings me back to the lotus here of, of you being able to, you know, move through this energy. The sun is kind of actually look, that's a hand. It's a hand that's kind of holding the sun here. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I feel like the, the spirit realm sees you as someone who's been able to kind of emerge out of this storm, if you will. Okay. Out of this storm to find your magic within your power. Some of you are reclaiming your power here. There's definitely this. Okay. <clears throat> when I was looking at this, her, the way that she's kind of carrying this little, looks like a little rainbow cape here. I was getting the energy of lightning, but that, not that kind of lightning. Lightning in terms of like lightening your load. I think it's spelled almost the same. L-I-G-H-T-E-N-I-N-G. Light, lightening. Like lightening. Um, like if you have a heavy load and then you're, you know, releasing some of it, lightening it. Okay. And that's what came through with this, this rainbow here um, as well. I, f I have a feeling that your the spirit realm sees you as someone who is very, also very connected into the spirit realm. Um, some of you have some very strong, uh, psychic abilities here as well. I'm also getting a very calming energy here too, because we do have lavender, the cat and lavender. Hmm. There was a similar energy here in pile number one as well. Almost this kind of energy within you that is so powerful that you, wherever you are, wherever you go, you evoke change. You could catalyze a lot of changes. And that's what kind of brings me to like that Kali Ma energy. You might evoke a lot of change um, within you because of the energy that you bring. Okay, is what I'm seeing here too. Some of you, and this is only going to be for very, very few of you, if not just one of you. Some of you, because of this, I feel like this past heaviness that could be here with the forgiveness is here twice. It makes me feel that someone who's watching this reading today could be someone who as a... I almost feel like kind of like as a trauma response, you might have a tendency to self-isolate, almost like an energy of hyper-independence, okay? Hyper-independence, like I don't need anybody, um, I don't want to be with anybody, I'd rather be alone, I don't want anybody to hurt me, so it's just kind of shutting down and, and uh, pulling away from people. And that way, I feel like where it's important here for you to work on forgiveness okay and forgiveness is not easy you know it, it sometimes it takes a long time sometimes we feel like we'll never forgive somebody for what they've done or how they've hurt us or how they've wronged us um, but when we hold on to all of that energy all the anger all the resentment the only person that's really hurting in that is us okay so I definitely feel that you're you're the spirit realm might see you as somebody who could be holding on to all of that energy that's kind of building and there's a need for a release because this is more or less, I feel like about you listening to your soul's truth. Okay. Um, really working on your healing. I feel like is something um, <clears throat> that is significant uh, here as well. Okay, so let's pull some tarot. I am going to be using this deck here, which there are some cards in it that I might have to cover up for you too, but let's see here, pile two. Okay, so how does... The spirit realm see you, pile two. How does the spirit realm see you? We have death. Okay. How does the spirit realm see you? We have initiation, which is the hanged man. We also have the lovers. Initiation. Wow. Mm. 
maybe for some of you, this is like the spirit realm sees you as someone who is going through an initiation. Because with death here, this is about change. It's about transformation. Rebirth, death and rebirth. The lotus here. Like you are being initiated and that might be through a lot of karmic energy here too is kind of what this is giving to me. How are you seen in the spirit realm? The queen of waters, beautiful. Which is the queen of cups. And we have the Page of Cups. Okay. And we have the Nine of Trees at the bottom, but she is... She's not wearing any clothes. <laughs> so I'm going to have to cover her up. Uh, this is the big crystal I need. Is that going to work? No. No. I'm just going to have to cover her whole body. So the nine of trees, which is the nine of wands, the nine of wands is, is a very wounded energy. Okay. So wounded. So the spirit realm sees you as someone who has been through a lot. Okay. You've been through a lot and I have a feeling that it has to do with romantic partners. Um, there may have been a profound, connection in your life that really 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 did a number on you um and i feel like the spirit realm sees you as someone who is healing from those wounds okay i feel definitely some type of spiritual initiation some type of powerful transformation i feel like the spirit realm also sees you as someone who is has very powerful spiritual gifts some of you might have a gift of mediumship here some of you may be still early working on discovering and nurturing those uh, spiritual gifts. Some of you are a little bit more well-seasoned. Okay. Um, I also see that the spirit realm sees you as someone who has a very childlike energy as well. Um, I feel like for some of you, there is a need to connect with your inner child more. Nurturing your inner child. Okay. Um, the wounds for some of you might even be from childhood. Okay. Hmm. Some of you, a relationship. Some of you, I mean, I'm noticing there looks like there's an, a, an ancestor or a grandmother that's here or even a mother. Some of you, if you've had someone that has passed that really affected you pretty profoundly. Okay. I do want to get a little bit more information on this initiation here, which is the hanged man. The hanged man is about changing perspective. It's also about surrender. Okay, the energy of surrender. <clears throat> the reason why surrender is important is because resistance causes suffering. When we resist something from happening or something that's trying to change, something that's trying to end, and we try to hold on to it or we try to not loosen our grip from something. That is what causes suffering for us. Okay, so I'm seeing definitely an initiation here. What is this hanged man energy here, spirit? We have the magician. The magician is about willpower, willpower, manifestation, focused intention, and we have the fool, and also the seven of cups, which is the seven of waters here. And I'm seeing the eight of swords at the bottom. The eight of swords is a lot of negative thinking or even self-limiting beliefs, okay? So the spirit realm might see you as somebody who is trapped by your own fears, um, 
doubts, okay, insecurities. You might be somebody who has a lot of dreams, a lot of visions, a lot of, um, uh, say, ideas, plans, things that you want to do. Fear could be something that's kind of holding you back that the spirit realm is seeing that you're needing to shift your perspective and that will help you to really fully step into your power here to feel confident enough to then begin to step outside of your comfort zone um, towards dreams, towards goals, okay, whatever it is that you feel uh, drawn to, okay. This could be a problem. You know, the Eight of Swords can sometimes be obsessing over someone. So if that is true and you are obsessing over a significant person from the past, maybe someone that has hurt you, I feel like there's a need for um, grounding your sense of self, identity, autonomy. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pull a last card for you. I'm going to be pulling it from the Soul Mirror Oracle for you. Pile two. Okay, so what other messages for pile two? What other messages for pile number two, spirit? We have peace and it says chaotic and calm and I'll say that lightning is very chaotic here. <clears throat> okay, so we have peace. Where is peace at? There it is. Okay, so it says all that unfolds in your life reflects a divine order and soul alignment. The illusions of the external world can be transcended by immersing in the stillness of your own heart. Let your soul's radiant calm shine forth and ripple into the world. Lovingly embrace the understanding that everything is in divine order and perfectly attuned to your soul in all dimensions of time and space. This attunement is so precious because your physical life is your soul represented in the 3D reality. Here to see and comprehend as a human and then process and learn in our soul evolution. When you feel at peace, you ultimately surrender to all of you, acknowledging your life and fundamentally your true being. I like that because this goes along with this message here. A need for release, a need for surrender, and I feel like that Eight of Swords energy. So that you are able to fully step into your power here. Um, in perceived chaos, you are submitting to illusions and distractions outside of self, which will feel engulfing and out of control. Shift your focus into your own heart space and clear your energy by deeply looking inward to, to listen to your truth. If it comes from you, you will innately know the healing answer. Alternatively, you might find that the chaos is an illusion created by external attachments and that, in fact, it isn't yours. This is a wonderful learning opportunity to practice recognizing your own cues and signs and to listen to your inner compass on the path to calm and peace within. Finding calm in yourself is the ultimate acknowledgement of your soul, for you have moved everything aside for your soul's truth to radiate and peacefully flow into the world. Divine energy flows through you, originating from your heart and self-awareness, then permeating your body and finally expanding from your mind into the world. Embrace the power of calm that aligns with your soul's journey and project peace out into the world. The reflection says, how can I find calm and balance within myself, even amidst the chaos and turmoil of life? How can I cultivate a strong and stable center and rely on my own resources to navigate challenges and find calm and tranquility. So that being something for you to take some time to uh, ponder. 
All right. So that is all that I have for you. Pile number two. I do hope this was helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next reading. Hi, Pile 3. So those of you that resonated with card number 13, Taboo, and the Yellow Crystal, uh, today's Pick a Card reading is How Are You Seen in the Spirit Realm? So let's see. How are you seen in the Spirit Realm? And I will have all of the decks that I'm using today listed in the description box, okay? We have tree people with sustenance. Um, let's put this here. We have, ooh, we have rage. With Sekhmet, rage. Are you angry, pile three? <laughs> Are you upset? Um, we have water. We have the Lotus with Resilience. Hmm. The Frog, oh, okay, another Lotus. The Frog and Lotus with Metamorphosis. The Fox Spirit, and it says, Think on your feet. We have the Bee Spirit with Prosperity. And the ceremony with invocation. Hmm. Ooh, I just noticed there's something in the background here. I have to cover that a little bit. Okay. Invocation. Okay. <clears throat> so... How are you seen in the spirit realm? Well, some of you, okay, just remember this is a general reading, okay? So if something that's here that doesn't really resonate for you, just kind of leave that out if it doesn't fit you. But we do have rage, okay? <laughs> so maybe some of you, the spirit realm sees you as somebody who has a short temper, somebody who gets angry quickly, Somebody who lashes out, somebody who is still having, I feel like, maybe some issues surrounding self-control with your, your feelings, your emotions, you know. So maybe you could be someone who, if somebody says something that really triggers you, that you could become very emotional, you could become very angry. And I feel for many of you, it might even come out with feelings, emotions, you know. A, a very intense, maybe spirit, uh, spirit realm sees you as like, there's a lot of intensity, um, within your energy. Okay. So that being very specific, but with invocation here, you know, she looks like she's, she's, what does she have? She has like a little crystal grid here down here and her little bowl or her platter. And she looks like she's kind of, um, feeding into the energy or giving it an energy here. So she's performing a little ceremony. So some of you, the spirit realm might see you as somebody who is very spiritual, okay, very um, connected into doing rituals or ceremonies or uh, something of that nature. I do feel that the, the spirit realm sees you as um, someone who is very, um, very talented with uh, manifestation, Okay, because you do have the B spirit here with with prosperity. You may be somebody who is a very hard worker, somebody who works well with others, somebody who is able to really create and manifest abundance, especially with the fox spirit being here. It says think on your feet. You might be somebody who is able to figure things out quickly, find solutions to problems, organize ideas, maybe even working with other people to help people to to get things moving or get things going, you could be, you know, even have a job like that where you are kind of like, you know, your stuff and you're, and you're good at it. Okay. I have a feeling that you're, you're someone who the, the, the spirit realm sees is very clever. Okay. Which is one of those things with the, with the Fox, very clever, um, very cunning, very sly, but in a way that not, not is manipulative, but more or less that you, 
can read, I feel like, energy and know exactly when to act. Okay, just like the little fox. He knows when to, you know, make his move. Okay, <laughs> being very watchful, very observant. So you could be someone who's very observant there as well. <clears throat> we do have, <clears throat> we do have um, the lotus that's here twice. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, my throat is still a little crazy from that flu that I had. Um, your lotus is here twice, and on one of them it says resilience, and the other one says more metamorphosis. Okay, so I feel like because lotuses also came out in I think it was pile two. Um, lotuses, if you're not familiar, they are flowers that grow in very dark, murky water. Okay, so they emerge these beautiful flowers here. So. I feel like in a way the spirit realm sees you as someone who has gone through potentially a lot but is in the process of this change. They also see you as someone who is very resilient, who has been able to kind of overcome, I feel like, many um, challenges. I feel like you're also someone who is incredibly resourceful here as well um, with the sustenance, someone who's very resourceful, like I said, very much can manifest prosperity and abundance um, for yourself as well. Some of you may also have a very strong connection to nature, okay, to animals, maybe something significant, working with the elements. Some of you might be very much into um, spiritual work, things of that nature. Um, we also have the element of water here as well, so I have a feeling that many of you could even be healers or have natural healing abilities, um, psychic gifts, okay, is something that's very profound here as well. Um, some of you could be water signs, okay, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, or have that as something that's very prominent uh, within your chart as well. Okay. Um, what else am I seeing here? I'm feeling... In this energy, blessed, okay? And some of you might not feel that way, but I feel like the, the in a way that the, the spirit realm sees you as someone who has been able to kind of take certain situations and really kind of turn them around, you know, versus kind of sitting in that darkness that you're really somebody who's been able to go through a lot of, um, a lot of change. Okay. I'm also feeling with this taboo up here as well that the spirit realm sees you as somebody who is on a soul, you're on your soul's journey and really kind of opening up into being your most authentic self. Okay. Learning how to be your authentic self. Um, it's definitely something I've seen there. I feel like the spirit realm sees you as someone who is very wise, uh, very knowledgeable. You may even be somebody who kind of, um, what is that called? Uh, hmm, I forgot what, what it's called. I, I feel like to explain it, I feel like you're, you're someone who wants to help others. Like you might even, and you know, not that this is a bad thing. <laughs> I feel like you have to set some boundaries though, but you could be somebody who has a tendency to try to fix others. Okay. Try to have a tendency to try to fix others, um, or even help others to the point where it could be something that's draining you. Like you could be somebody who gives too much. Okay. Too much of yourself and you know, in a way that could be something that ends up biting you in the butt. Okay. So some of you might be needing to set some boundaries with that as well. I feel like the spirit realm sees you as somebody who is, um, very innovative, very intelligent, someone who has a vision, a dream, a goal for something that you're working towards. Um,
Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely getting an energy here of you being someone, like I said, who is stepping into your own authentic expression of self. Okay, you may have gone through a lot of personal transformation over the years and really trying to find your true self. Okay. Really trying to find your true self. But I feel like having gone through a lot of Facing a lot of challenges, facing a lot of adversity, you know, but also having the willpower to continue on, to continue to move um, forward. I, I'm feeling also that the spirit realm sees you as someone who's also very sensitive. Okay, very sensitive. And that may be, you know, like if people are, when people are talking to you or, Telling you, some of you, I'm feeling like you could be a little bit um, sensitive to criticism. Okay. Um, there's there For some of you, there could be a little bit of a defensive energy here. Okay. And I, and I only feel it's because you have gone through a lot. Okay. With the resilience here. But I also feel like the, that the spirit realm has also seen you as somebody who has been able to overcome a lot. And maybe... You know, they see just how strong you really are with the things that you have gone through. Okay, so let's pull in some tarot here. Let's see what else. How are you seeing in the spirit realm? seen in the spirit realm we have justice how are you seen in the spirit realm hmm. I'm gonna have to cover this other one up we have the ace of waters which is the ace of cups I'm going to have to cover this lady up. She's not wearing anything. Okay. We've got the Witch of Stones. The Witch of Stones, which is the Knight of Pentacles. We have the Seven of Skies, which is the Seven of Swords. Whoa. What was that? I don't even know where it fell. Let's just pull the... Well, at the bottom of the deck, we have the Seven of Trees, which is the Seven of Wands. So I'm going to put that up there and try to find whatever card fell on the floor. I don't even see it. I don't know where it went. Hold on a second. Okay, so it is the Witch of Waters, which is the Knight of Cups. So we've got Justice, the Ace of Cups, the Knight of Pentacles, the Seven of Swords, the Knight of Cups, and also the Seven of Wands. So the seven of wands is about facing challenges, facing adversity, but also perseverance, pushing beyond them. Um, the one thing that I do want to clarify is the seven of swords, okay? Because the seven of swords can talk about deception, trickery, uh, illusion. Some of you, there could be some trust issues here because we do have rage up there. Like I said, um... I kind of want to look at that a little bit, I think. Let's clarify the rage. Why is rage here? Oh. 
Why is the rage here? Oops. Why is the rage here? Okay, let's see. There's two cards. We've got the Maid of Skies and also the Lovers. Maid of Skies and the Lovers. Page of Swords. This is the Page of Swords and the Lovers. So this might have to do with romantic connections. Some of you with the Page of Swords energy here, you may have been a person who's been scorned by love. Okay, scorned by love. Because I feel like with the Knight of Cups energy here, like I said, I feel like the, the Spirit Realm sees you as someone who feels things very deeply. Um, the Knight of Cups can also be incredibly... Um, vulnerable maybe you are someone who puts up the kind of the defenses um to protect your heart you could have been someone who has been scorned in the past there could be some trust issues here okay you could still be healing um i'm feeling from certain karmic um cycles that you may have gone through when it relates to your love life um hmm the Seven of Swords can also talk about illusions. Okay, so I do want to clarify that as well. <clears throat> I do feel like the Spirit Realm does see you as somebody who is very heart-centered, though. You know, the, the, the Queen, I'm sorry, the uh, page Knight of Cups is very um, heart-centered, um, loving, nurturing. Okay, so you could be someone who really loves love wants to find love, wants to be in love, um, is in love, okay, <laughs> you could be in the love, you could be someone who's trying to find love right now, but I'm feeling like there's a little bit of skepticism here because you have, for some of you, you may not have had the best luck, okay, when it comes to your romantic partners, but I truly believe that you are someone who, you know, does try your best to still believe and have faith in love, but I have a feeling it's been a little bit of a bumpy road here. Why is the Seven of Swords here? Some of you might even be, um, the spirit realm might see you as somebody who falls quickly in love. Okay. <laughs> falls for people very quickly. We've got Moonchild here. The moon. Again, another card of illusion here. Interesting. I wonder if some of you kind of get caught up in illusions surrounding love. Because you are someone who is very much very connected in the heart space. Some of you could even be trying to manifest love. This could even be a lot of fears, a lot of anxiety. A lot of suppressed feelings and emotions that you have from past situations. You know, I feel like that rage is definitely tied into a past relationship or it could even be something that you're currently going through uh, right now. Why is the Seven of Swords here? We have the Maid of Trees, which is the Page of Wands. Page of Wands. Okay, let's get one more for Rage. <clears throat> hmm. The Three of Cups. Hmm. Some of you, this might even be certain fears that you have. So the, the, the spirit realm might see you as somebody who, who does have certain fears or even doubts. I, I also feel like the spirit realm sees you as someone who is very creative, very passionate, um, 
And I feel like intuitively guided towards specific people, situations, and specifically with, with being guided towards certain paths or directions, I feel like they're, they're, the spirit realm sees you as having a hard time trusting yourself, trusting your own intuition here. Trusting your own heart. Some of you, I feel like there might be betrayal. Okay, there could be betrayal. And this could have to do with friends. It could have to do with a romantic partner. Interesting. I'm also seeing some of you <clears throat> with justice being here. You know, justice is a, a can be a very beautiful energy in the upright. It can talk about integrity, honesty, truth, fairness, treating people equally, fairly, balanced harmony. Um, so it could be that you are someone who the spirit realm sees that you you lead yourself from a place of integrity. Or try to most of the time. Um, but justice can also talk about karma. It can talk about contracts. So, you know, the spirit realm might see that you are someone who right now is trying to work towards clearing specific soul contracts um, that you do have with specific people. I just did a soul contract reading for those of you that have not seen that yet. Um, I just posted it a few days ago, so you might want to check that out if you haven't seen it already. And it's basically me asking spirit, what is your soul contract with the per a person? So it could be anybody that you can think of. Um, but that might be something to look into for those of you that are wanting to look into that as well. Now, others of you with the Knight of Pentacles energy here. Some of you, I do feel like you're very gifted with... Um, some of you might be naturally, this won't be for all of you, okay? <laughs> it's very specific. Um, some of you might be really gifted at uh, witchcraft, okay? Um, the occult. You could be someone who's very much into um, spiritual things, tarot, divination, um, working with, with candle magic, working with um, other divination tools, scrying. Um, you might be very naturally gifted at that as well. You might have a very strong connection to the earth. You might have natural healing abilities is what I was picking up earlier. Okay. That's another thing. Okay. So to close out your reading, we are going to be pulling one of these cards from the soul mirror Oracle and seeing whatever messages spirit has for you for pile number three. Any other messages for pile number three? Any other messages for pile number three? We have shadow work. Okay. So this may be something that spirit is wanting you to work on. It could be something that you're currently working on right now. Rage may be a part of that shadow work, okay? Especially if you are someone who is holding a lot of anger inside, resentment, okay? That could be your shadow. Um, so let's look at the shadow work and see what it says. Hmm. Shadow work, okay. So it says... Clear your energetic threads to uncover a bound, boundless wellspring of love and connect to the larger experience of life around you. Shadow exploration may be a rocky path, yet it is a courageous act of self-honoring and affirmation. By walking this path in its momentous time, you hold the power to bring about a radiant and loving world. Looking inwards to your inner being is the most important work you can do in this lifetime. On a singular level, we are here to clear the threads of our own energetic being and remember the deep seed of love hidden within us all. This then connects with the created life around us, a combined and shared experience, the outer world. 
Shadow work might be confronting at first as you come face to face with whatever is trying to take you away from your true inner being. You will face things that you have hurt in this lifetime or ones before. Anything that blocks you from living your highest being. However, in doing the work, not only do you honor yourself in this lifetime, you honor life and love past and present and everything that is possible for everyone in the world to experience. Innately, you know what a beautiful, bright, and loving world is possible. You also know that you, too, need to take responsibility for your part in it. This is the first step. This is an important time in the evolution of our consciousness because collectively, we are becoming awakened and strengthened to do the work. Remember, you are eternally supported, guided, and held with love. For it is love that made you see the shadows in the first place. You are held and supported by a loving force that has guided you to this place and that will continue to sustain you as you take steps towards the, your highest self. So the reflection says, what wounds from my past or present are preventing me from fully expressing my authentic self and connecting with divine love externally and within? How do I take responsibility for my thoughts, emotions, and actions in shaping the reality that I co-create? What is my ultimate vision for a world filled with love and light? So those might be some things that you want to kind of ponder, especially for those of you that journal. I feel like those would be some really good journal prompts um, for you. So yeah, look at that, how she's just kind of standing there in front of the mirror and she's like facing her darkness here with that fire that's there. Like I said, some of you that could be rage, you could have anger issues or, you know, you could be somebody who gets triggered very easily and lash out at people and say hurtful things or, you know, and I do feel like you are somebody who is very sensitive, like I said. So if you are, you know, hurt, people hurt your feelings, you could sometimes say the wrong things um, or not know how to properly express yourself might be something that's there as well. So learning how to calm, learning how to balance uh, your energies might be something that's important for you as well. Okay. All right. So that is all that I have for you. Pile number three. I do hope this was helpful for you guys and I will see you in the next reading.